Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, I'm going to be talking about the episode from Season 6, Episode 19, The Ordeal, where Elizabeth has an accident and loses the use of her legs. I'll also be joined by a very special guest, Cammie Kotler. Hi, Cammie, and welcome, and thank you for agreeing to talk with me about The Ordeal. No, it's my pleasure. It's exciting to get to talk about it. Early in the episode, you see Mary Ellen out feeding the chickens, just one of those regular chores around the house. And Grandpa and John are working to brace a pile of logs so that they will be secure. Sequentially, early in the episode, the whole way that this starts is because you and Amy see this baby bird. It's funny because I didn't really remember anything except for that I'd fallen off of the wood pile. Um, and then I think maybe somebody on my Facebook page had had seen the episode and asked asked me about it. So I I I think I got to watch that segment over again to try to like trigger whatever memories I have. I mean, in the storyline, the boys were supposed to have finished the pile of logs, like putting um, like wedges or something under it to stabilize it, and they got distracted. I guess maybe it's Ben's character who's most at fault. He wanders off. And then Elizabeth and Amy see a, a bird has fallen out of a nest, climb up the wood pile, and the wood pile collapses. And I know that that the log pile didn't collapse. So what they would have done, um, I do kind of remember having to do a fall. And I think we've we've all at some point in time on the Waltons had to fall off of something. And they just put a big um, like kind of mattress or netting full of bits of foam, like a, a gymnastics pad kind of thing. And then you just fall out of camera, right? Um, and then you land on the pad and it's easy. And I think what they would have done is they shot me theoretically on top of the wood pile, probably just standing on a platform. And then I fell out of frame onto this, um, this mattress. And then they would have put me on the ground and kind of strategically put logs over and around me. So it looked like I was buried in logs, but really nothing was even touching me. Was it, was that scary at all? Did you feel I, I, trapped in any way or? No, I mean, I'm not really, um, was it claustrophobic or anything? Okay. Um, I always liked when we had to do stunty things. Um, it was a change of pace. And in fact, yeah. those are the things I tend to remember the, the most. And Elizabeth did fall off of a lot of things. <laughs> I fell off a bridge. I fell, uh, there was a tree house that I dangled out of. There was the Ferris wheel. Um, what else? Oh, I fell down a mine shaft. There was a fair amount of falling. <laughs> After Elizabeth is injured, she is taken to the hospital via Epbridge's car. And once at the hospital, you see me all geared up in my official surgical uh, outfit here. And I'm pretty tough on Jim Bob and Ben, who were responsible, in my opinion, for Elizabeth's injuries. With Mama and Daddy and Mary Ellen all being at the hospital, Erin is running things around the house by herself. The Baldwin sisters think that they can be of help. They want to do something. So they say they can come and help Erin. Only thing is, I don't think they're very much help. They can't figure out how to properly fold a diaper. They aren't all that much help around the kitchen trying to make food. So it's very sweet of them, but not very helpful. Elizabeth finds herself in two casts in traction. And I spoke with Cammie about shooting these scenes. So clearly not real casts that you wore 24 seven. They were real casts. Like mm -hmm. they, what I remember is some funny little man from the prop department who had expertise in this somehow coming down to the set, maybe the week before or two weeks before we started filming to measure me oh. and then to, to make the cast. So he, he totally put me in cast. Like he wrapped my, legs and put the plaster on. I had to sit and wait for it to, to, to dry. And then I had to lie on my belly while he cut up the back of them. So I remember that being a little scary because he had like big heavy clippers. Oh, and I'm like, and you could feel the cold metal on the back of your legs. And that was a bit like, okay. And I don't remember, uh, he wasn't, something about him did not inspire confidence. <laughs> um, so I was like, oh, I hope it doesn't hurt me. Um, and then when he was done with that, he had to measure me for the braces which as I recall involved lying on a big piece of butcher plate paper. Well, but he, he drew around my legs with a bit of pencil and I wasn't crazy about that either. But when we filmed the scenes in the, in the hospital, it was such a, a hassle to get in and out of the, um, the 
cast that I just sat there. So whereas normally, you know, when they're lighting, you go do something else or the stand in will, will sit in your place. I just sat. So I spent most of the day sitting in that bed in those in those casts. And I do remember by the end of the day, like my legs were sore just from not moving. Um, so that was that was new and different. You know? Would they lower the traction at all when in between shots or when there was a bit of a break? I don't really rem I don't really remember. Um, I mean, I would assume they would have done whatever they could to make me comfortable and no one like made me stay there. I just, did, like, when you grow up on a set, you know, you, you want, you're part of a team and you want to get it done as quickly and efficiently and well as possible. And if you look around and go, if I leave set every time I could theoretically have a break, it's going to take 20 minutes to get me back in these casts. And that's just doesn't seem responsible. You know, we, People will be late for lunch or something important like that. So now I did notice that this hospital was a different building than what we often used for the hospitals, and I believe this particular set was on the Columbia Ranch, uh, another lot that we use sometimes. It was very close to Warner Brothers, and where the exterior of the Baldwin's house was, and where we ultimately filmed the exterior of the Walton house for our very last reunion TV movie. The Baldwin sisters want to do something for Elizabeth, get her some sort of a gift. They decide to get her a pony. When it's delivered, Amy is all excited and Amy rides it around, but Elizabeth, of course, can't ride the pony. I don't remember having a pony. Like people would, people <laughs> said, what did you think about that horribly sad scene where Amy rides your pony? I'm like, I had a pony. And then I watched a clip, I'm like, there's a whole pony. Yeah. Like, oh. And where did the pony go after? The pony go. The right. Baldwin ladies, Baldwin sisters gave you a pony. Gave me a pony. And that was the last we saw of it. I loved when you got on it towards the end because you were a lot taller than Rachel was at that point. And your feet were practically on the ground. <laughs> it was a recurring problem because I, I, I'm not a tall person. I've never been tall. I've, I've typically... Like all through school, I was the smallest kid in my class, but they managed to cast as my best friend, somebody who's so tiny, like Rachel is such a, just a petite human being. Yeah. And yeah. so I just look like a massive giant through my entire like pre-adolescence standing next to Amy. I'm like, I'm a small person. Why did they do that to me? And you're right. I, I, now that you mentioned my legs dragging on the ground, that, I, that, <laughs> that rings a bell. One of those moments with me going, I don't know how. I don't know what size I am. I can't convince them that I've gotten taller. The whole family finds themselves taking on different activities. Ben wants to be able to help and buy things for Elizabeth, trying to, in a way, buy her forgiveness. Uh, he would like to have an important job or something that he you know, can brag about, but the only job available is being a janitor, basically, at the dewdrop. So he sucks it up and agrees to take that job. Meanwhile, Grandpa is seen feeding John Curtis, which is just so cute. <laughs> Once Elizabeth is sent home from the hospital, she's out of the cast, but she has braces, which she wears for most of the rest of the episode. The braces were hard um, because I was on crutches and then with my legs fully braced. And, and it was just super hard to get around. I didn't really have the muscles to do that. And I know by the end of every day, my legs were super achy from just being immobilized and then trying to find ways to get from point A to point B with these braces on. And again, it was a, it was a hassle to take them on and off. Mm. So, and then if they're filming a lot, you sort of leave them on and just wait to the next scene. So that was hard. I, I do have one really clear memory of a scene where I guess I was lying in uh, the grandparents' bed mm. and maybe um, Olivia was washing my legs or something. There was some sort of quiet scene between the two of us where she had to roll me over. And I remember the director, Larry Dobkin, when we did the first rehearsal, we rehearsed it. Then he came back, he says, there's something really specific that should happen when she rolls you over, your legs should end up crossed. Which was a detail, I guess he knew about people who don't have use of their legs, which I as a little kid didn't know. And just unconsciously you, you, you move your legs, right? You use the muscles you're used to using. And so he's like, there's something specific that should happen here if you really don't use your leg muscles. And he sort of rolled me over and showed me how, it, how the cross would occur. And I remember being like, oh, wow, okay. So for some reason that, well, I love Larry Dobkin. So yeah. that kind of attention to detail. Yeah, he was always great to work with, yeah. And because he was an actor, he really, I always felt like he, he gave us extra things, extra actor 
direction as opposed to just staging and, you know, go do it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I appreciated that with what little time there was for that to happen. <laughs> yeah. He, he tended to find some time and he was also super direct, you know, like he didn't, um, cause I know there were at least a couple occasions where he hurt my feelings cause I was very sensitive, mm. but I also learned through working with Larry that, um, that he cared enormously about me and my performance mm. and that it was feedback. It was useful feedback and he wasn't hurting my feelings. It was me being too sensitive. Um, and I, through that, kind of actor director relationship I think I really learned how to appreciate his directness mm. as something just efficient and true and you could count on him you'd know he'd tell you right yeah no that's a good point yeah because sometimes we never heard anything and you just go well did we print that because it was good or because we're out of time and that's good enough and I'm not going to be able to get anything better there is a visit to the hot springs was it warm was it cold with dry ice in there to create you know, a sense of steam. <laughs> what I remember for sure is like air hoses that went oh. into the water to make it bubble. I also remember being in the, um, cause there were two ponds on the back lot. Yeah. There was Drusilla's the big, pond. Yeah. Right. The big palm Drusilla's that we used for, you know, if we were swimming Everything. or I was falling off the bridge, you know, that was all <laughs> Drusilla's pond. Um, but there was a littler pond, which I think was the pond that Someone at some point in time told me it was the Camelot pond that they'd used it in Camelot. And this, it was a smaller pond and it had like a little sort of rocky bed that fed into it. It had like shallower pools. Right. And I remember being in one of those with it being full of water and then they put like air hoses to make it bubble. Uh-huh. And then I would put money that it was would have been dry ice somewhere to make okay. steam. I, no, there was no hot water involved. Okay. It was it cold, cold. I mean, were you in there freezing and trying to pretend like it was nice and warm? <laughs> Probably. I don't actually, I don't remember that that part of it. I just remember like being like, oh, okay. So hoses with up air and bubbles. All right, fine then. In order to just take little trips around the area, uh, they arrange to bring the pony cart in and they hitch up the pony named Judy. Hmm. I wonder where they got that name from and whether I should take that personally. Anyway, uh, it's kind of sweet because this is something that then Ben decides he can do for Elizabeth that doesn't involve just trying to buy her favor and her forgiveness. Uh, so it was kind of sweet. And of course, then Amy and Elizabeth take the pony cart in the dead of night uh, to Ada Corley's place. Ada Corley was played by Virginia Gregg, and they are going to try and get her to heal Elizabeth's legs because she uses all these natural herbs and things to heal people. I remember that when we got, when uh, Amy takes me up to see the old scary kind of medicine woman. Yeah. Ada Corley, yeah. Right, played by Vir Virginia, I think her name Greg. is Greg, Greg, right? Greg, yeah. Who, if I'd known who she was while she was there, I might've talked to her about like working with Cary Grant or something like that, but I missed I it. I know, me too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that the so the herbs that she put on my legs were um, were like a green cold cream. In the end, Jim Bob is the one who encourages Elizabeth to finally take a couple of steps to him, and it is a happy ending for the Waltons. I, I really appreciate you filling everybody in on all the things that I didn't know about the episode. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate the information exchange because I, I get the same thing. I have people ask me questions. I'm like, I wasn't there that day. I don't know. I want to thank Cami very much for joining me for this segment. Uh, I'm going to speak with Cami a bit more soon. So watch out for that video. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining us. And I will be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons and more of your questions in a segment of Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.